On the third day of October, Halloween gave to me three UFO abductions, two deputy so-and-sos, and a masked hawk being creepy. <laughs> Hey everyone, welcome back to the 31 Days of Halloween. I am Bo, I am your host, your companion, uh, some might argue a guide, through the 31 Days of Halloween uh, that we've got going on here at Legion Podcasts. Uh, we have, of course, reached Day 3, the 3rd of October. Uh, previously, we have been exploring other Bloomhouse movies, including The Black Phone and Sinister, and now uh, we have moved on to Dark Skies. Uh, a movie that I have a lot of time for. This is one of them, uh, you know, I said it earlier in the uh, the season uh, that these movies kind of fall into three categories. One is movies I've seen and want to go back and revisit, movies that I dearly love and movies I've never seen before. And this was one of those, uh, hey, I've got, I want to go back and revisit this because I remember, you know, kind of enjoying uh, Dark Skies. And so going back and watching it again was a lot of fun because I like science fiction horror and Dark Skies is the right blend for me. Like, I don't think it's a perfect movie and we'll get into that in a minute, but um, it definitely skews more towards the horrific and it certainly reminds me of the uh, Spielberg movie that he wanted to do that ultimately became Close Encounters which was uh, a story that was kind of based around the idea of the Kentucky Goblins, um, which was, you know, in theory, a UFO sighting uh, or a UFO encounter in which a family was, was laid siege to for a night. And he was going to do that, and ultimately that movie turned into Poltergeist and E.T. It kind of split into those two things. And it was going to be kind of a sequel to, to Close Encounters, if memory serves. Uh, but but sort of the dark side of that. And it might have been called Dark Skies at the time. But anyway, so this was written and directed by a guy named Scott Stewart, who um, did this, uh, did the, uh, uh, produced the movie Legion. Um, he's directed uh, this and Priest and Legion and a little bit of television, but hasn't seemed to have directed anything in in some time uh might in fact just be out of the game um based on a a quick look at this i don't i don't see that he's been up to much for the past three or four years but maybe that's just uh you know a, a hiatus as he's working on some other stuff but regardless he uh he did dark skies and this was the third movie after he'd already done legion and priest which are you know uh, okay movies I would say Legion is maybe the closest to a good movie in that mix. And uh, and so Dark Skies is ultimately the story of a, a fairly normal family. It's, you know, mom, dad, two kids, um, two boys. And they're, you know, mostly okay. They're a little bit, uh, of, of, you know, strained at this point in the story as it begins because the the dad has lost his job has trouble finding one there's you know that pressure and then all of a sudden just weird stuff starts happening in the house right like uh all of a sudden they're finding the refrigerator open and all the pictures have been taken out of the frames and that kind of stuff just weird stuff that at first they think well it might just be the kids but the kids say that they don't have anything to do with it and then stuff starts happening to the parents to lead them to believe, Hey, maybe this is something more. Uh, for example, there is a moment, uh, when a bunch of birds start hitting the house and, uh, making a real mess of that. And, uh, Carrie Russell, who is the, the mother in the film, uh, Lacey Barrett is her character's name. And she is the first to start to put things together. Like, Hey, something's going on in the house and I'm not entirely sure what. And then she has a, a moment where she just blacks out. She loses time in the, in the movie. Um, she is showing a house cause she's a real estate agent and just stops what she's doing, walks into a glass door 
and just bangs her head against it, wakes up at home later, not knowing what the hell happened other than her boss is calling to be to ask her, like, hey, what happened? Because the people you were with thought you were having some kind of seizure. And the same thing is kind of happening with the kids, that they're wandering off into the yard at night. Uh, they don't seem to have any uh, understanding of how they got there. And, uh, and finally it happens one night to the husband. And that's sort of, sort of what pushes him over the, uh, the edge into believing that maybe something beyond normal kin is happening here. And so they go to visit in the best scene of the movie, J.K. Simmons character, a guy named Edwin Pollard, who is, um, a guy who runs a website that's about visitations like this. And he doesn't have any good news. And that's what I like most about this movie is that it's grim. This is not a movie that has any kind of uh, positive message to say. Like it starts with the Arthur C. Clarke quote about um, how uh, there are two uh, possibilities regarding life in the universe. Either we are alone or we're not and both are equally terrifying. I'm paraphrasing, but that's the gist of it. And this movie takes the we're not alone uh, uh, stance in, in terms of what's happening in, in the universe. And J.K. Simmons lays it out for him and is like, hey, here's what's going on. We are being visited by aliens. There may be a couple of different types, but it doesn't really matter. Um, I've been tracking these situations uh, where kids go missing. Or people go missing, but a lot of cases it's kids. And here's the pattern that leads up to it. And they've been experiencing a lot of these same things. And... Uh, he, they say like, well, what are we supposed to do then? You know, like we can't let them take our kids. What do we do? And he says, well, you fight, you try to make it so difficult for these creatures that they just move on. You know, they're going to find somebody. They're going to take somebody. You just make it so that your kid is too much of a hassle for them to take your kid and let them deal with, you know, some other kid. And, you know, you can't move because they'll find you, you know, they've come across thousands if not millions of light years and so going you know a couple of hundred miles one direction or another is no big deal and they've got trackers in you and you know i mean it's just uh, this really grim assessment of their situation which is like fight like hell and maybe you'll win and maybe you won't but that's the game like there's no rhyme or reason to it they they, they didn't pick you because you're special you just got picked you just drew the short straw in terms of alien visitation, we don't know what they want. We're not going to ever know what they want. It, it's sort of like, um, you know, showing a dog a magic trick. Like the dog doesn't understand it. Doesn't like we, we, we wouldn't have any appreciation of what it is they're trying to accomplish other than maybe studying us for whatever purpose they have to study us. And sometimes people get returned. Sometimes they don't. What are you going to do? And so that's kind of the, the end of the movie is them, you know, fighting to, to protect their children, uh, from being taken. And, um, you know, spoilers for dark skies. If you've never seen it, I, I think you should, but a slight spoiler, not a slight spoiler. It's a pretty big spoiler. So sorry if you've never seen dark skies, but I think it's still worth the time. Um, but they are not entirely successful in that effort. Uh, and it ends in a place that makes you really wonder you know, if, if, if there were to be a sequel to this movie, what, what kind of sequel would that be? Uh, there never was and probably never will be, but it's, it's a grim ending. It's, you know, I know I keep using that word. I should get a thesaurus, uh, and use something other than grim, but it is a pretty grim film. Uh, it, it has a, a, a mean spirit to it and, a, a sort of, uh, a sense of fatalism that th no matter how you fight, you, you can't possibly win. And so that's all the stuff I like about it. And there, and there are moments of, of genuine, like genuinely unsettling moments. And, um, the scene with JK Simmons is just pure gold. It is what I want in every one of the, these movies about UFOs where you go to an expert and they're like, Oh yeah, you're just kind of screwed. And, best of luck and I can tell you roughly what our understanding of what's happening is but it's not a clear understanding and there's no get out of jail free card for it so you're gonna have to you're gonna have to fight 
Uh, so I love all of that stuff. I think Carrie Russell is really good. Um, the guy who plays the dad um, is an actor named Josh Hamilton, who's been in like Alive and Kicking and Screaming and a bunch of movies. Um, I, I, like recently, he, he played a character named Lance Hornsby in The Walking Dead, but I, I've given up on watching that. And so not sure who he is in that movie, but he's pretty good. You know, he's a, he's a pretty good actor and he's good as, as the father who is trying to support his family is really embarrassed by the fact that he can't get a job and he's not able to support his family. And the last thing in the world he needs on top of all of that is a bunch of alien bullshit. And so, so I like his character in the movie. And then you've got the two brothers, Jesse and Sam. And I think that's a really fun relationship. Like they're, they're close in not super close in a creepy Hollywood way, but you know, kind of close as brothers and you can get a real sense of the older brother really wants to protect his younger brother. That seems to be the focus of, of these uh, visitations. And it's just a, a, a really solid cast as well uh, as it is, um, you know, kind of a solid premise. Um, the biggest problem I find with the movie is I think it's a little over long, even though it, it's only about a 97 minute movie. There are moments where it really feels like we're kind of spinning our wheels. Not all of the, the stuff, it, it, it takes too long to get to the realization of here's what's happening. And by the time you understand what's happening, the movie's kind of over. Um, you know, you've got sort of a last big scene of, of them trying to fight against these forces but you know that's 20 minutes of the movie and an hour and 10 is kind of getting to that place and i wish that we got there a little bit quicker i wish we had a little more time for them to kind of fight against this without it just being the big you know the culminating event of the film uh the catharsis the resolution but i do find myself going back to this movie every so often i, I tend to revisit it every few years because like I said I like a good sci-fi horror movie I like the idea of these alien forces that we don't quite understand and couldn't wrap our heads around even if we knew the truth of it it would still be difficult to grasp because of the universal scale of it and so forth that um, this movie gets it maybe as right as any movie that tackles this topic uh, you know there's the fourth kind, which is uh, similar in some ways, but also is a movie that I don't find to be um, as good or as, as creepy as this one is. Um, it, yeah, the fourth kind gets into some stuff that I'm just not as crazy about. It's okay. It's interesting, but it's it, I don't think it succeeds as being a really entertaining movie. Um, Fire in the Sky is maybe the best of the bunch, but even that is much more of a here's this thing that happened and now let's puzzle it out whereas this is like oh this is a threat that is coming this is an active thing that we are fighting against and that stuff i find really frightening and really engaging um i i wish there was a good if somebody has a recommendation by the way for a good book that is along these lines i would be really into reading something like this like the Dark Skies novelization uh, is, is probably fine, but what I want is something about like, hey, here's a family that is kind of set upon by these forces uh, that are coming from outer space and they are in many ways powerless to fight against them, but they're going to try their damnedest. And I think that is a great, a great premise and a great setup. And I wish there was a little bit more having fun with that premise in this movie, um, along with the setup. And and also there's a little too much, hey, there's domestic problems, um, not just between husband and wife, but, oh, there are these bruises that are, appear are appearing on the kids' bodies, and now they're being isolated because their friends are starting to think that maybe that they're abusing their children, perhaps, and... Child Protective Services is going to have to get involved and et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Um, you know, all of that stuff isn't bad or wrong. It, it just spends a lot of time doing that and not getting 
to the thing I'm really here to see, which is a family besieged and trying to come together to fight against it to save members of the family. Um, but it's still good. I still think this is a solid movie with some really creepy moments. There, There's one scene in particular as they're kind of waiting for aliens to show up perhaps on the 4th of July where they've got all the windows boarded and they have this really morose dinner um, where you know this sense of dread just hangs over everything and they're trying to be light about it and trying to be um, optimistic and and talk about you know great things that they remember from a previous fourth of july's fourth of july fourth of july's something like that um and but that's a, a wonderful moment where you, it, it kind of captures the dread of it the futility of it um but also that determination of hey we're, we're going to fight against this and so, um, yeah, it, again, if you've never seen Dark, Scri Dark Skies, and I know I've spoiled a bunch of it for you, still totally worth your time. You're still going to get a lot, of, a lot out of it, I think. And as far as, you know, alien threats go, where we're not on another planet like Aliens or Alien or something like that, uh, in terms of just being visited on Earth by aliens, this is one of my favorites in terms of uh, it just being an eerie, you know, little suspense film. And and once again, J.K. Simmons just holding it down. My God, my God, is J.K. Simmons just the best in everything that he's in. Uh, this is still a few years before, like this came out in 2013, so Whiplash was still around the corner. Um, but oh my God, it, it, did he just show early and often that when he is in a movie, he is always going to be one of the best things about it. So uh, that's Dark Skies. I hope you enjoy it. I think it's a good creepy movie. We are going to uh, stick with our Blumhouse slash alien theme come tomorrow. Um, so join us then for more talk uh, about another movie that features aliens and it is weirdly in my wheelhouse, uh, but we'll talk about that then. Um, so if you're listening to this on the Dark Parade feed, thank you very much for subscribing. Um, you can jump over to the Legion podcast feed, uh, where you can also get this, but also a bunch of other shows like, hello, this is the doom show and, uh, cinema beef and, or the butcher shop is what it's called. Now I'm, I'm an old man who, uh, who remembers things being called by their old names. Uh, like I, I'm like New York. What about new Amsterdam? I say to people all the time, uh, <laughs> But uh, also on uh, the Legion feed, you get Cinema Psyops, you get the Psycho Semantic podcast, you get a whole bunch of stuff. Uh, uh, Friday Nightmares, um, podcast on Haunted Hill, just a, a, any number of shows that I think you're really, really going to enjoy. And, uh, and if you're listening to this on the Legion podcast feed, then uh, if you're not subscribed to the Dark Parade, hop on over there because we do uh, weekly shows over there. Uh, on a variety of, of horror related subjects and movie reviews and all kinds of fun stuff. So, um, anyway, more, more importantly than any of that, it is Halloween It is still the first week of Halloween. So get out there, enjoy yourselves, be spooky to each other and to yourself and, uh, come back and join me tomorrow for another installment of the 31 days of Halloween. Talk to you later. Mm -hmm.